the industrial production of things has served us with conveniences, but not with health. I, there's one more question I really want us to address. All right. And so many people in the fibromyalgia group that have talked about how they've had medicines and medicines, maybe it helped a little bit, but then after a while it didn't help at all, which is our message. But this lady, she says, this is a slightly different problem, but again, we're, we're depending on our doctor to know stuff and we're not taking responsibility and like you if you're really sick you need to learn about it right like you cannot depend on a guy that's going to see or gal that's going to see you for five minutes take a look at your chart make some sort of guess and write a prescription and that's it i mean how much effort is that in going into your improvement yeah so before said, you read the question before you read the question let me just say this one of the really common problems for people with fibromyalgia is that they are the thyroid dominant type and they have thyroid issues. And in the Western medicine, they actually do not have something for the thyroid. They only have to wait until the thyroid is broken enough so that they can try and replace it with artificial thyroid hormone, mm -hmm. which it's, it's not great. So, uh, in the natural world, we have the detoxified iodine, and we have just plant-based medicine. You can take kelp or dulse or any other seaweed that's loaded with iodine, which is what your body is asking for and not getting. So when they pre prescribe to you levothyroxine, which is actually the T4 hormone, there are four iodines in every molecule of that levothyroxine. So they're actually supplementing you with iodine. You can supplement for much less. Yeah. Cost-wise and energy-wise. Right. Yeah. Okay, good point. So my doctor put me on amoxiclav. I took the whole course of it, not knowing what it was like on the body. The bacterial sinus infection was bad, but Amoxclav has ravaged my body. I can barely function at this point. Has anyone else been put on this mistakenly? If so, what happened? And the, it sounded like... Scott, could you spell the thing for me? A-M-O-X-I-C-L-A-V. Amoxy... Is it not amoxicillin? She wrote amoxiclav twice. C L A V, okay. Amoxiclav, an antibiotic used for bacterial infections. It contains amoxicillin and clavulanic acid. The acid stops bacteria from breaking down the amoxicillin, therefore, uh, strengthening its impact. So if you happen to be one of the people who is allergic to penicillin, anything that has the psyllin in its name is going to hurt you hard. The second thing this will do is it will completely wipe out the internal microbial terrain. So if you don't repopulate it intelligently after you're done with this wipeout, you're going to have... A mess. Yep. Yeah. And if, for example, if you have Klebsiella that is not taken out by the amoxicillin, then you end up with an illness that's broadly similar to people with, well, what is it called? Autism, the autistic spectrum, right? Because they are typically having problem with Klebsiella. Well, what to tell you other than, uh, please take one of our broad spectrum probiotic, prebiotic programs that will help you put your gut back together.
Yeah. Stratoflora so, is one of those things built for that purpose. Right. It fixes everything. We call it from tongue to tail. It has something for the stomach, something for the small intestine, large intestine, something that's antiparasitic, something that supports your liver, your pancreas, your spleen. There's like all the bits are present, and we try to restore you to a place where, where your internal barriers are restored. The biggest problem you have is when you end up with intestinal permeability, colloquially leaky gut. Because when you have that, you now have underdigested bits of food entering your circulation, entering the part of your body that it should never enter. And now you have foreign protein or protein bits circulating throughout your body. And your immune system is fighting it. And if you have something that looks like cartilage that's in your circulatory system, it's going to make custom bullets to fight that protein and it will start killing your own cartilage because it's just the way it functions. It's sort of like shooting guns inside of airplanes, right? You, you inevitably miss and hit a piece of fuselage and cause an injury to everyone. That's, that's the nature of leaky gut. So you need to undo your leaky gut. So, Mark, we've talked a fair bit about um, nutrient-dense food. So yeah, now, you, now let, me talk about, let me talk about the mucosal barrier. I want to really speak on that. The mucosal barrier is supported by iodine, supported by seaweed. Okay, so there is a body type for people with fibromyalgia. More commonly than not, many of them are thyroid dominant. They, their initial requirement for iodine or for seaweed is greater than other people. And they don't get enough of it, and they usually don't feel like eating it or whatever. I mean, we can supply it in a tincture, but you need mucosal barrier support. Think, right? and uh, build that back up. But you need to have probiotics, which is the, that's like the seeds in the garden. Prebiotics, that's like the fertilizer in the garden. And then what else do we need in there? Herbs and nutrients <laughs> that are acting like, like the water, like the stuff that will help it grow. Anyway, I think I've said it. Sorry to hold you back. Well, the one thing I want to emphasize is um, the inside of you is, like you said, a garden, right? And you've got yeah. lots of weeds. So you have a choice in a garden between the plants you want and weeds. So when you do the antibiotics, you are basically nuking the garden or digging everything up and throwing everything away <clears throat> and starting off from scratch. Well, if you don't plant anything there, nothing's all that's going to grow is the weeds which is exactly what we all do when we take antibiotics. We take the antibiotic, our, our infection goes away, oh, I feel better, and then you go eat ice cream or drink Coca-Cola or whatever it is that you eat, and you don't do anything to restore that garden. And then the result is, even if you go and you're eating nutrient-dense foods, there's nothing there that's going to break it down properly so that you're going to be able to get the benefit of it. So if it's... You know, we use the car analogy a lot. If you've if you've put diesel in an ele in a car in an electric car in a it's, gas it's gas gonna go. car, you know it's not going to work, and nothing you do is going to make it work. So um, you you know you have to make sure that the car is in working order and that you're putting the right things into the car for it to work beneficially. And yep. no, no doctor ever tells you that. No doctor says, oh, take this, and it's going to kill all the bacteria in your body. It's, yep. And, uh, and then, um, then you'll be fine. No, you're not going to be fine. You need to take the probiotics, the prebiotics. You need to restore that interior garden so that everything works properly. Otherwise, when you've got chunks of protein running around your bloodstream, 
you're just going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah, that's the story. That's the story of this woman who has been feeling miserable ever since she was put on this powerful antibiotic that very successfully wiped out the infection plus many other things. Yeah. Yeah. And she, and on top of it, she may have been allergic to penicillin without knowing it. And this, this is a problem that's on the rise because these antibiotics have been used in our food production animals. They give it to chickens and they give it to cows so that because they are crowding the chickens, like 20,000 chickens to a barn, it's really dense. It's an unnatural, high-density, high-crowd environment. So they give them antibiotic in the feed so that there are no infections that spread throughout. But the chickens are affected by it, and you, you are now eating antibiotic-laced um, eggs and antibiotic-laced meats and and same story for milk, and same story for meat. So we are now seeing more resilient organisms out there, and we all ourselves are becoming more sensitized to certain specific antibiotics that are used on industrial scale. Yeah. <sighs> Not good. Industrial production of things has served us with conveniences, but not with health. So look at your lifestyle and start making some positive changes in it. Yeah.